It's a screen share here. Yeah, so let's begin with Bitcoin. So that's something everybody has questions on, I know for sure. Okay, so when we look at Bitcoin, we want to look at the very simple fact that, you know, Bitcoin has returned to the point where it broke down from, right? So that is right here. And it's logical that when people need to raise capital, that there would be a pause here. But I think the most important thing, as I said before, is I call this the pause that refreshes. You know, it makes your bulls a little nervous, but being a nervous bull is good. When you're so sure of yourself, it's a top. So it's the pause that refreshes. Now, in Ethereum, okay, I took a little heat for this when I originally drew it. Um, this comes from a, a, a book called Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. It was invented by somebody called Jesse Livermore. And he identified that when a, a, a trend is going to happen, right, that it starts with like an upward sloping cone. What's optimal is if the cone is like this, but in Ethereum's case, it's kind of a rectangle. And to be very brief, I like this theory. Old school stuff has worked in crypto for a long time. And I think you're looking at Ethereum going to 400. It's just a question of when it starts. You know, possibly my work shows, you know, early May, right after the Bitcoin happened. Okay. Litecoin. Okay. Litecoin is pressing up against a key diagonal level. Okay. So we got above 42. And now it's trying to stay above 45, 46, right? And this is what these big cryptos do right before they break out. So, you know, unless there's a, a huge reversal in equities, like I know people in crypto want to hear like definitive high conviction calls, but if you're going to do good research, you also have to acknowledge the risks. And the risks are that the equity market and Warren Buffett just tanks equities, right? So I'm thinking Bitcoin and crypto survive because the next leg of the crisis, it's like there's a 2008 with inside 2020. Uh, and that's got to be, that's got to be crypto positive and it's not, well, you know, we're going to have to, I don't know, we're going to have to have a show about dog grooming or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, thank you for that, Bill. Now let's also switch over to token metrics and see how, how token metrics projects. So as usual, this is not any form of financial investment advice. These predictions should just be used for investment research. So our models are bullish on Bitcoin as we speak. So these are short-term models. So in 30 days or less, very, very, or, or rather bullish on Bitcoin. Now, if we go to the price prediction models, you notice we've also now expanded the table to show the last 12 months. So this will be updating and showing you the, the last 12 months and the accuracy. Now looking at this, so in April, so the red line is the actual price while the dotted purple line is the predicted price. So this was pretty much in the same range. And then, and then the predicted price has Bitcoin going up it's actually been more, cons more conservative while the actual price has been going up a lot faster. And as we approach the Bitcoin halving, which is May 12th, our models are predicting Bitcoin being around 10,000, almost $11,000, then going almost as high as 12,000. So if we scroll all the way down here, May 12th. So the models are saying Bitcoin has a high probability of being around 11,000. Then on the low end, it could be as low as 10,400. Then on the super low end, about 8,200. While on the high end, it can go as high as 11,600. Or on the super high end, which is unlikely, over 14,000. So all in all, just kind of obviously to take this with a grain of salt, past performance is not indicative of future results. This is basically saying, the trend on Bitcoin is bullish. 
and lots of people have been talking about the housing being priced in. Now looking at this, so we would never rely on just purely this to make any form of trade or investment. So think of this as having multiple checklists that you would like to check. So if you're looking for short-term trade, this is just one of those checklists saying Bitcoin is bullish. Bitcoin is in a bullish trend short term. And then also the technical analysis would also say Bitcoin is in a bullish trend. So, the, so basically two items are very bullish. And then if you also go here to short to our short term ratings, Bitcoin is number one in the tokenometrics rank. So all in all, those would be three checklists telling us as we approach the Bitcoin halving, things are very, very bullish. So it, it probably is a good idea to huddle huddle to the Bitcoin halving. Now, if we switch over to Ethereum, we also see the same thing. Ethereum is very bullish as we approach the Bitcoin halving. So in March and in May, the models were pretty much in the same range, basically following the same trend going up. Ethereum went from being around 120 all the way to now where it's 220 or 210. And so, yeah. Then as we approach the Bitcoin halving, our models are predicting Ethereum having a price of 280. And on the high end, it can go as high as 343. Uh, I know Bill mentioned possibly even as high as 400, but just a matter of, of when. Then on the low end, our models are saying it could be 265. And on the super low end, 203. Actually, sorry, that's, that's May 11th. I meant May, May, May 12th. May 12th is 285 for the prediction price. Prediction low is 269, and on the, on the prediction low end is basically 203. So taking this as, a, as one checklist, then doing the same with the technical analysis. Okay, it seems my, my browser here is glitching. Apologies. <laughs> okay, yeah, so RTA is very bullish on, on Ethereum. And then going back to the ratings. So if we go to short-term ratings here, Ethereum's actually not in here, short-term. Um, okay, it's not, it seems my, my Safari is giving an issue. But anyway, I mean, all in all, things look very good as we approach the, the Bitcoin halving. Um, anything else to add to that, Bill? Uh, we can't hear you. Uh, do you have me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I love it when old school and new school are telling you the same thing, right? Um, my work and your work or your modeling is telling people that anyone who gets off the train now risks missing out. And we all know that one of the most powerful forces in crypto we haven't talked about is FOMO. FOMO may make its return. Because if you look at what those computer models are saying, and you look at what can happen on the outside of the bands, I mean, how much FOMO is there going to be, as an example, if everyone gets off the train at nine and it goes to 12? What are they going to do when it gets to 12? FOMO. Massive FOMO. <laughs> Man. Right. Especially if they're, it's not an accident that the token metrics customer base is international. It's not. Because I think the international audience, frankly, is smart enough to know that this coronavirus could create a problem either in some country outside the United States or with a financial institution outside the United States, okay? So I think our audience is smart. Uh, I welcome them. Please stay with us, okay? And I think people who are not paying attention uh, are gonna wish, frankly, that they had our models when it's at 12K. All right, now, that being said, let us know what you think. Are you bullish as well on Bitcoin and Ethereum as we approach the Bitcoin halving? Let us know in the comments down below.